Let's talk about it. Happy Friday. Sam Bedino for life there. I love that. Happy Friday, guys. On my Black Packer podcast. After this is Victory Friday. We have not experienced a Victory Friday. I don't think we've... I don't know if we've done a show with a Victory Friday. Victory Friday. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Hope everybody had a great day. My best friend in the world, Coach Clarich, up in Detroit, Michigan, did not have a good day yesterday. Because those Lions forgot to tuck their ears in, man. There's... Shots were fired, and those boys weren't ready for it. Packers roll, absolutely roll, 29-22 yesterday in a game that wasn't even really that close. Uh, Lions have some you know, great offensive stat numbers, but, man, was that a good football game. I'm your host, Mike Wall. Thanks for uh, watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe, rate, and review on uh, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and the audio section. Of course, go over to Process to Perform on YouTube. You check out the video. We do a lot of film analysis here. I hope you like it. If you do, hit that like button. And our show, as always, is sponsored by BetOnline.ag. And the holiday season is off and rolling with NFL in full stride and the NBA and NHL hitting midseason form. BetOnline is your number one destination for all your sports wagering info. With up-to-the-minute sports wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions, BetOnline is the top spot for everything pro and amateur sports, and not just the big four. BetOnline has info available at your fingertips from both desktop and mobile at access and access anytime for almost any sport that is played. From mixed martial arts to international soccer. Like, international soccer is, like, the last bastion. of Like, that's the worst thing you could think of. Like, I would have been, like, uh, cricket or any. Anyways. <laughs> Head to Bet Online today and remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-A-E-V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, Bet Online where the game starts. Let's talk about it, man. That was a fun game. That was the first time this year where you're like, man, this is this team a playoff team? Like, you don't want to get ahead of yourself because they played – The Lions looked like they got – I can't got the tongue, man. Lions looked like they just got shell-shocked. And this is what happens though, when you're in an NFL game, division rivalry, and a couple early turnovers make a huge difference. I mean, I think we, I think it was, you know, back and forth three times for touchdowns and we had a turnover. Problems, you know, problems arise. But the way that we won for the first time – I mean, for the first time in – I'm going into this game thinking the offensive line for the, the the Detroit Lions after what they've shown on tape for the last uh, two months. You just go, man, it's going to be a tough day because short week. You kind of think about all the things that kind of go into that, keep the game plan simple, etc. And I mean, number one theme of the day, man, our defense, our defense wins, and our defensive line absolutely. I mean, most of the tape we're going to watch today. I'm just telling you guys right now is our defensive line, different players, mauling dudes absolutely abusing uh not just the guards but it's that all pro center those tackles that are first round draft picks some guys regard uh, the right tackle Panay Sewell is one of the top guys in the league right now not yesterday tough sport and they're still super talented but it's just one of those days where sometimes it's pretty easy like put this together win your 1v1 matchups Play harder than the other guy on defense. Stop the run. Get to the quarterback. A lot of good things happen. Jonathan Owens comes out, plays, has 12 tackles yesterday, played his ass off. We have only three sacks. We got 12 quarterback hits. I don't know how many pressures they're going to call, but it, that dude was running for his life. And Jared Goff is like the perfect storm of you got two guards that are, I think, probably career backups on a really good offensive line, really well coached offensive line, but you got a quarterback who can't run, is not a runner. And you've got national stage time. And I don't know what got into Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, and Kenny, and Devontae Wyatt, and got, got, uh, Jonathan Goddard. I mean, these guys, and Igbari, they just decided, like, buck up your chin straps. It's, it's go time. They just played so well. Isaiah McDuffie, 11 tackles, filling the gap. Quay Walker filling the gaps, like attacking the line of scrimmage again. It was just Awesome. Like Detroit had this good day statistically. So Jared Goff, he's got uh, 323 yards passing, 140 yards on the ground. But they got three turnovers, fumbles, sack fumbles, interceptions. And again, I think that's just situationally, if you can get off the double teams, if you can attack the line of scrimmage, it's kind of all the stuff we talked about in the preview show, they just – they did it, and they did it to a really high level. That's the first takeaway. The second takeaway is Jordan Love is building on last week's game. Last week, he went over 300 yards. 
This week he gets three touchdowns, no picks, 22 for 32, 268 yards. Huge shot, 53-yard play to Watson on the first play of the game. Under through the ball, actually. We'll see it on tape. But they literally pulled that right off the right off the game plan. I mean, excuse me, right off right off the tape from last week. Chicago Bears ran the same thing twice. One time it worked, one time it didn't. But concepts are the same. Hold the safety in the middle. Give yourself space on with your speed receiver. They use DJ Moore. We use Christian Watson. Unbelievable. Team ran for uh, over five yards of carry. Again, a running game with um, Patrick Taylor and A.J. Dillon. It's like you know, 3.2, 3.3 yards of carry. Not very good. But Jaden Reed's getting the ball a couple times. The good things happen. Jordan Love, obviously, with the scrambles. Really good pocket presence from him yesterday. Really feeling the rush and doing an excellent job the times they were. He was pressured, which, to be fair, wasn't a lot because offensive line did a good job in pass pro. But the other thing is, that's the way the game goes when you get up 23-9 to nine or whatever it was early on. When you're getting a bunch of turnovers and things and you start converting, like that's the the whole demeanor of the defense, their defense changes. And that's you got young players playing well, playing better, improving. You gotta, I think the biggest takeaway, and I, I didn't I didn't put this down earlier in my thoughts, but this is two weeks in a row where you just look at the offensive staff, head coach offensive staff going, they're figuring out how to use their personnel. Like it's starting to like they're doing some stuff still, the lead blocking with the wide receivers and stuff. Like, come on, guys, let's let's try something new. But they are figuring out how to use their personnel. They're figuring out what Jordan Love likes to do. They're like it's it's just all start, they're figuring out how to get Jade Reed the ball more often because you got like a, spe, a kind of a special player there as far as what he's able to do with the ball in his hands. You're giving Christian Watson opportunities to run to space and be successful. You're not running him on chair routes and trying to make him something he's not. Romeo Dobbs is going to be that guy who's more of a, you know, I, I Robert Brooks. Romeo Dobbs, Robert Brooks, 87, 87. That's what I think. Thank you, Lang. Let's watch some tape. Let's get right into it. I got to remove some stuff here, guys. Give me one sec. All right, here we go. First things first. I love this. Okay, so first of all, early in the game, run play weak side. They put in number 70, who's – let's see. I don't even know who these guys are. We're talking about some of these backups on the uh, Detroit Lions for their, their offensive line. Dan Skipper. Dan Skipper. All right, Dan. Dan's coming downhill on our guy Preston Smith, our defensive MVP on this show. Two things happen here that I love. One, we talked about the double teams. Devontae White drops to a knee, okay, and they don't get any movement on that double team in the green circle, and then Preston just absolutely – Preston Smith absolutely ends this dude's day, right? He gets not just Dan Skipper, but also takes care of the fullback, takes care of the, the running back, plays over. Dude, just whop a lop three guys with one uh, – same foot, same shoulder, a la Reggie White, right? That's what Reggie used to do to me when I tried to pull when I was a rookie. Man, it hurt. Now, this is just a good design by the Detroit Lions. This is how they, they – listen, remember the first series, they're just moving down, up and down the field like they want. <clears throat> they got man coverage. Quay kind of gets in the way here, unfortunately, of Valentine, but really they got the, the rub route, and you're going to usually pick the guy underneath. So he's got kind of two rubs, really, with, with Quay being a natural one. He really tries to redirect. Get the first. Good play. Got to make the tackle. Love the penetration here. So we're taking on two guards, right? They're running, they're running sideways. If they run sideways, they're not going to get those doubles initially. Man, let's take advantage. They get the double on Rashawn Gary, but Wyatt and Slayton really do a good job of pressing those guards and winning at the line of scrimmage. Make the guy cut early. Nothing happening. Backside end, Barry beats his backside, uh, backside tackle, backside tight end. Makes the play. Now, we don't have an answer for this. It's been all over tape. We keep running it. <clears throat> we got a deep safety, but easy. it's very obvious to see what happens here, right? We're gonna They're going to carry the, the go route, and they're going to run the sale seven or whatever you want to call that out to the sideline. But the tight end, this is the guy we talked about during the pre-show. Uh, their, their new tight end from Iowa, Laporta. Phenomenal player. Had the first touchdown. But it's just it's too easy. It's too you got to reroute them. We got to maybe drop into deeper zone. I know they they put the they put the fullback or the running back in the flat to try to take that that linebacker away. But it's just it's too easy. And then comes back up. You're one on one with a corner. Now you think we might have the advantage here unless they're throwing a jump ball. But he actually 
beats him on leverage, gets across. Great ball by Jared Goff. It's actually a little bit behind if you can get your hand on this ball. Laporte is a really good player. Like I said before, he's probably a top five tight end in the league right now if you're talking about all purpose. Come back the next time. This is where I kind of, you kind of saw the change. Kind of saw the difference here when they said they on this play, they we rush three, we drop eight. And and I remember Goff kind of started trying to figure out something at the line of scrimmage. And I thought they were going to call a timeout. <clears throat> this wasn't a third down play. And it kind of got them, it kind of got their wires crossed a little bit. Now we talk about playing downhill. Isaiah McDuffie, Quay Walker, Quay Walker, both shooting the gaps. Why was that important? We talked about this in the pre-show. You got to get those guys off the double teams. Got to get them off the double teams as fast as possible. Why? Because they're really good at doubles. And when you single block these guys, we're talking about now with Kenny and uh, Devontae Wyatt, we're going to win those, those singles more often than not. But more importantly, now we're playing on their side of the line of scrimmage, making them hesitate, making them cut. Two-yard gain. Love it. Pressure breaks. So I think Rashawn Gary gets a one of his sacks here. Big play in the game. But really, who makes this play? KC. KC just whips that guard. Graham Glad. No, that's uh that's not Jonah. That's uh Colby Sorsdale. That's our rookie. Probably not the best. So they got a rookie playing against. I mean, it's almost like an insult, right? Jonathan Owen picks this up. By the way, interesting point. Simone Biles, I think John and Owen are, are either engaged or married. My wife told me this yesterday. She goes, which one do you think is the better athlete? I know I'm supposed to say Simone Biles because she's like a 14-time champion, but I started thinking about it. And it's probably pretty close. I saw them like rope climbing. And uh, I think she just beat his ass up the rope because, you know, she's a gymnast and whatnot. But that's, I mean, can you imagine like the, uh, can you imagine the, like the physical duels they must put on? I mean, if they have social media or something, they'd make a, a million views a day. Because this guy's no joke, man. This guy had a big game yesterday. Talk about penetration again. So we got penetration from Kenny Clark upfield on the single block versus the, versus the rookie. And now we got Quay taking advantage of the backside. So you're going to free up. Wyatt on the backside tight end by himself, but you're also beating Panay Sewell across his face. Now you're in, in on the tackle. These things just start wearing on guys because the, the play speed is now faster than you're used to. It's faster than, you, than you're kind of prepared for. Preston Smith puts, look, Panay Sewell is one of the best guys in the league right now. Everybody's just, a couple guys are just saying he's the best right tackle in the league right now. Okay. Like he's really good. I get it. Not yesterday. But I mean, the spin cycle right here now. Let him get on your chest, spin out, bad look. I mean, you know, those plays go unnoticed because he didn't maybe get a sack or he didn't throw. Dude, that is a, that's a problem because that, that happened really early in the game. And if you don't think that Panay Sewell is going to remember that for the rest of the game, you're absolutely out of your mind. Slayton does a, such a good job of stepping to the center. So they're hearing the calls, they're seeing the eyes, and they're they're anticipating the play. Steps to the center, gets the guard, the backside guard, Graham Glasgow, takes a poor step because he's nervous now. They all get their chest going towards the sideline. He just throws them all away, comes back and makes the play. You look at all three, left guard, center, right guard. They're all, they're all facing the wrong direction. Absolutely phenomenal job. Anigbari, again, goes unnoticed. Anigbari goes unnoticed, beats Panay Sewell inside, doesn't get the sack, doesn't get the pressure, but beat him. And you, you start piling those up, man. That's just putting money in the bank for later on. Isaiah McDuffie must be in the game whenever possible. I know we got people of uh, Devondre and Quay. Put this man in the game at all times. Are you kidding me? I mean, just listen, make the tackle. Dude takes the shots. You want he is play, he's playing. Everybody else played like him yesterday. That's the best compliment I can give him. The rest of the people brought it like Isaiah McDuffie brings it every week. Rashawn, look. 
Decker's a first round draft pick. He's had a good career. He's, he, he's even better. I think with Hank Fraley as, as his coach, I think he's done a great job with these guys, but footwork decides battles. And anytime you set vertical, like he does, and you get your kind of feet in line, you kick your feet together like this. I mean, we're, these are professional athletes, right? So the first three kicks should always look the same. Like if you're not automatic with your technique, you got a problem. And listen, I, I wasn't perfect. Certainly I had a problem, but now as you look back, you watch more tape, you kind of, you know, you know Asian experience, you go, man, this should never change. And when it does deviate, you just see this is a very, very for for anybody who plays defensive end in the National Football League in college, the way to beat people who want to set vertical with their feet kind of almost in line is to go inside. It's that's it's really that simple. Press them, go inside, make them mob up because now that right foot, that inside foot has to open up. It takes too long. Very, very easy right here to win this day. And again, that's not a sack. But it's got to get up 12 quarterback hits. Devontae Wyatt, those guards, we talked about what was a must-do this, this game. You have to take advantage of those two guards. Have to take advantage of the guards. He gets upfield. Got guys coming from the back end. Absolutely phenomenal. This is a jailbreak. Slayton's not even ready to rush. But between Brown and, uh, and Igbari, and then, of course, Quay Walker comes here. I mean, really, the only guy that gets blocked is Slayton and then Lucas Van Ness. Everybody else is free to go. Run around. Again, Jared Goff does not handle pressure well. We talked about it in the pre-show. How do you get, you know, how do you bother this guy? He's, he doesn't want to run. Get to his face. They got trips right. Preston gets him again. They called this one an incomplete, I think. Preston Smith appreciation post. Here we go. I have, I mean, I got all these all day long. Stab chop pulled the exact same move last week on the on the left tackle on the Chargers. Slayton, who's a who's the other guy in this draft. So he just took the top two guys in, in uh, the 2020 draft and just absolutely manhandled them. I mean, that's listen, I've been there. We've all been there, but that's a bad look when you got that. Getting up off the ground on all fours trying to figure out what just happened. Oh, man. That's a bad look. And it's, it's not that that guy's a bad player or anything. He's great. But Preston's just on one right now. And he doesn't get the credit he deserves, man, because he just beats dudes up. Wide sets get quarterbacks hurt. We've talked about it a million times. We'll watch Preston and, and what Devontae Wyatt does here on the TE game out of the 2i. Please keep coaching this set. Please keep coaching this set. I mean, there's nothing you can do because you set so wide. Talk about the ta right tackle. He sets so wide. This guard's got to all the way out. He gets picked, and he can't come back. Now Preston's in his face again for the knockdown, and he's in his face. So Goff has already been having a bad day, has some accuracy issues on plays he usually would make. We got Preston again. Now they're going to run an ET out of the three technique from Wyatt. Comes down. Again, it's all footwork, guys. You set your feet. You got to drop that back foot like Sewell does, 58. Drops that back foot, has to press down. Slams into the guard. And then we see wrap tackle at the bottom to finish off the play. They make the throw, but Goffs are on the ground again. This is a great block by uh, Awasika, number 74 out of Philly. I had not watched him on tape before. This gets a great block on Isaiah McDuffie, which uh, that's a really, really tough block to be able to cut that guy coming out like that, coming uh, horizontal. And breaks Gibbs for a big run. They average like five yards a carry, but if we're being real honest about it, there was a couple of big runs, not a lot going on otherwise. Same play. Same concept, I should say, from Ben Johnson. Still no answer. See, we have a safety on the top and the right, but they're just running the exact same stuff. DB's trying to take it, trying to, to, to give the go route to the safety, but if you're the DB, it goes every, you know, goes against all your instincts to let the nine go in order to take the out. Sean Gary again, just Kind of matrix this really bad cut block here. 
We got our linebackers filling. Look at Quay and that plan on their side of the line of scrimmage. Got McDuffie filling, but this play goes at least to Jonathan Owens, who probably make the tackle based on yesterday's, yesterday's performance. But Rashawn Gary does a great job of slipping the tight end, making the play, and then and then Owens fills uh fills in the gap. This must be a crime scene, man, because there are bodies everywhere. Watch this. KC planting the left guard. Wyatt throwing the excuse me. KC's planting the right guard. Wyatt's planting the left guard on the ground. They both get Goff on the ground. The right tackle falls down at the end. Bodies everywhere, man. D tackles had a day yesterday. Now, I actually love this concept. So they're going to run split full. You see the tight end over on the right side of the, the screen. But they, they're running split full with a fullback, and they're taking the fullback, and they're running him at Agnabari as a dis, at, really as a distraction. So the offensive line is going to go to their left or right to left. Or excuse me, left to right. So they're just running split flow, but because of the fullback here, it really kind of screws up Agnabari right there just for a second. And now they don't have to block him. Although the tight end tries for some reason, they get downhill and they get this touchdown. That was a really good concept. KC taking advantage of this card, man. We talked about it in the pre-show. They have three first round picks on the offensive line. Got to take care of the other guys. Don't let them double team. Listen, like absolutely to perfection with the, with the defensive scheme idea was, and then how they executed was just big time on the ground again. Now we're talking about 94. You need to get on the action. Really stands up that guard. And then we have the backside spike from Wooden here, 96. This is a big-time play on a big-time player. Gets through on Sewell. Ends up making the cutback. Big-time play. I love this now. They probably got back on the sideline earlier, and they were talking about, like, 70s talking to to the left guard like, hey man, I tried to go hit uh, hit Preston Smith and uh, didn't go well. So watch the body, look at the body posture and demeanor as he walks over there, man. Like that guy wants absolutely none of that work, and because of that, because he doesn't kind of try to blow that hole open, he's just trying to he's just trying to survive right now. One more time. You know, these guys, it's not like these guys get on the field and they don't talk, right? So they bring it. So Quay ends up getting it. Slayton gets up getting it. But really, Preston just knocks, goes underneath this block. Guy's waddling into it. Ends up making the play for very, very little gain. Well, I'll tell you what, 94's really showed up the last couple of weeks. Penetrating quick. He's got great, he's got, he's got sneaky moves. Iowa practice. Laporta versus Van Ness. Laporta ends up winning this matchup. I don't know how it was in practice, but uh, I can just hear Coach Ferentz yelling at one of them. Sean, I don't even know how he gets this move, to be honest with you. Like, when you watch this play, we're in a good position here if you're, if you're the left tackle. I don't, I'm not really sure what happens. A little bit breaking the action. There we go. He's got the stab, chop with the hands. Really good at attacking wrists. Another sack. Now we're matching personnel. They bring 70 in again. He's in a two-point stance versus Kenny Clark. But you see, we're in like a, 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 f- a true four defensive tackle alignment now. Like we got a guy outside. We got five. This is, I guess, it's just our three, four. It's just the way we're lining up is a little bit different. Because they're they're matching with that personnel. They're counting him on the line, so they're going to they're going to shift their formation a little bit in order to get a guy between the tackle and the tight end, who's number 70. See, Kenny just posts this guy up because he's in a two – like you're in two-point stance off the ball. Now the deep, now that tackle, 70 uh, – what's his name? Dan Skipper is going back to the huddle like, man, those tight ends really got it rough. That is not an easy block. Just total domination by our defensive line. It's a big-time win. That's Frank Ragnar, man. All pro. All pro, Devontae Wyatt. That's a big time. Look at the power and explosion that he has right here. <sniffs> Gets the holding call. Frank Smart, you get a holding call instead of a instead of a sack. Makes sense to me. But that's one of those wins. Maybe that propels him to keep continue to grow and do bigger and better things. I, you just can't talk enough by how badly 
these guys won their one-on-one bucks. So you love it. You love that part of the game. You switch. So that's all the defense. And they listen, they played so well. Offensively, I'm going to show you a couple things. But if, if we're going to get down to brass tacks, like the defense won the game yesterday. Defense won the game. First play of the game, we talked about it. This is on Chicago Bears tape. It's on been tape before. This isn't anything new. But you run across the you run across the safety's face, right? You create space for Watson by either running the deep crosser or you run the post. But one way or another, you got to get in that safety's eye line so he holds. He's holding on the left hash here, and now Watson's got all the room he wants. If he leads him, this is a touchdown. Great way to start the game. Fifty-three yard game. We got to stop doing this right here. Let's do one thing at a time here. Jaden Reed's playing well. Let's not ask him to. Let's not ask him to be a lead blocker uh, as a wide receiver coming in against this. This this don't make any sense. They try to jump cut this. Here's the other thing with with AJ. If it's not there, like he's trying to jump cut, but man, just run right through this guy. Like, what are we talking about? You got space there. Just hug Zach Tom and go. See when he starts jump cutting back here, you're letting a guy like that make a play. Kid's a good player, but come on, you're two fifty. Sometimes things are just going to work. So we got trips to the left. They're in man coverage. Obviously, Jack Campbell, the uh, the Iowa linebacker, is going to open up to Christian Watson here. Christian Watson runs the wrong route. Jordan Love throws it, ends up working, touchdown. You look at Christian Watson, hands on his head, man, because he knows, like, man, I got lucky. I screwed that up. He ran the wrong route. Yeah, I mean, it's really as simple as that. Sometimes it's just going to work. See, Josh Myers here pops. So instead of running the guard out, you usually do a big pull for the guard. We're talking about Aiden Hutchinson trying to block him here. You block him with the tight end, but you pop the center. You don't see that a lot. It kind of shows off his athleticism, athleticism for those people who say, oh, you know, he's not doing this and blah, blah, blah. The kid, this is why they draft him. The kid's got something to him as far as footwork and ability. Just got to clean up some of the details. Good completion there on man coverage. You know, um, on this play, Interesting that, you know, they, they run man here. And usually when you run man, you're kind of required. And I think this is Dobbs. You're kind of required to come back, drop your hips good. Now come back to the ball. Doesn't really come back that much. And yet the the uh, the corner's still not on him. And again, sometimes it's just going to work. So you look at this play and we're going to go out with 89. And 85 got should have a single because you got a four eye on Zach Tom. And you got a shade on on uh, on Myers, but they're going to ask John Running Jr. to take this four eye by himself, and for whatever reason, he just runs into Zach and they wall it off. Now they don't get up to the second level, but this could have been a tackle for loss for sure. Jack Campbell comes over and checks his chin strap. But listen, sometimes it's just going to work out, you know. And that's kind of what it felt like a little bit. You know, you get the plays early that that happen. Obviously, you don't get the. The, the fourth and one play early, early on, but sometimes this stuff just works. Now, this is, a, this is just a big-time throw for a number of reasons. One, it's on time. Now, the hardest throw for a quarterback is a 15-yard dig route to your left side if you're a right-arm quarterback, right-handed quarterback. You throw it across your body, you got a 3 15. I mean, this is just a really, really tough throw. I guess it's a 10-yard, not a 15, excuse me. But you got to doing this on time. This is back like this is anticipate. This is anticipate anticipation throw. I used to go to USC games when I was a kid, and you'd, I'd like to watch the quarterbacks warm up. And all they do is it's one, two, three, four. They get back to their fifth step, do a pat, and they just throw to a spot. And the receivers, whether they were running a uh, an eight, whether they were running a, a a five, a comeback, it was always the same spot. It was anticipation throws. It wasn't based on cycles or anything. They were just using timing. This is we pump and then we throw. This feels a little bit like that. Great timing, great anticipation, great great uh, placement. Now, rock and roll opportunity. This is a great call by by head coach Matt Lafleur and his staff by putting in something. You see them when they when we come across the ball and they want to rock and roll the safety. So one rocks back, one rolls forward. Okay, they're not doing it with any sense of urgency. And you'll see even now the safety who's off the picture right now, when he's off the screen, he actually comes out a little bit wide because of the motion, but it's slow. So you got a guy down at seven yards and all of a sudden they rock and roll. You see him show up now. He's coming from 15 yards. Okay. So now he's 15 yards deep. He's got to figure everything out. Misses the tackle here. 
misses, you know, we got a 15 yard run and that's basically just taking advantage of, Hey, if we go cross the ball, we see that they're not covering him in man. They're going rock and roll with that safety. We got ourselves a, a good chance here. This was kind of perplexing on this play. You got your fastest guy in the field. You're going to let him run an out uncovered. I guess they're worried about safety on the second level because they're in the red zone, but it seems like, I think that might be Barnes out there. Like nobody's covering the flat. It was kind of a crazy play, but you know, Packers will take it short week. This is just off the tape. So we've shown, we put, we showed this last week, put Christian Watson in here. He's going to lead on a, you know, like a safety or a corner and there's going to be a safety in there. And we're going to try to make him like the lead blocker. I actually made fun of this play last week because he doesn't do a great job at it, but you take the same looks. This is what the game's about, especially in a short week, take the same looks and formations and now put a wrinkle and put a play action into it. And this is exactly how they think about plays. All right, we have a concept. Let's make four things off of this, off the same look, so they we can keep them guessing. Did a great job here. We talked about the play action. We talked about making sure Aiden Hutchinson doesn't have a free run. So Tucker Craft takes his shot on Hutchinson, then releases outside. That's a big deal. He releases outside and free up. Love does a good job of just getting rid of the ball and walking in the end zone for his first touchdown. Too bad we're not in Lambo. Can't get a real Lambo leap. Now, this goes unnoticed. First of all, John Runyon Jr., Zach Tom. Zach Tom did such a good job yesterday. I mean, I mean, re, against a really, really – what I'm thinking now is getting kind of elite level-ish player in Aiden Hutchinson. He was fantastic. No issues with the snap count. No issue. I mean, just – just uh, like he got beat a couple times. The ball's out. But he just did a phenomenal – that's how that's the life of an NFL uh, offensive lineman. But he did a phenomenal job. Now, Rasheed Walker gets bold right here, okay? And this could be, like, if this is Goff, he might step forward and take the sack. That's the way it was for them yesterday. But he doesn't. He escapes out. And, you know, we don't think a lot about this play. But if you go back and you lose this game and he takes a sack there and he takes a sack somewhere else, if they get the hand on the ball and they fumble it, all of a sudden you're having it. This narrative changes completely. So my point is it's not just what one person does where they get beat, where they don't get beat. It's how the whole thing goes together. And obviously the person with the ball, the quarterback most of the time, is so, so vital for making that group look good. Great pocket awareness. So there are two linebackers outside here on the top. Okay, I think you got a running back and a tight end. you got your receivers on the bottom and a trips look. So they bring their linebackers out because we're in empty. And they're going to man-match this, which means – Whoever goes outside is going to be Anzalone. Whoever goes inside is going to be Barnes. Now, you see Tucker Crafts on the outside. They do a great job of letting the Patrick Taylor clear. He clears, and as soon as Barnes just hesitates for a second, Tucker's got to beat because then they got the rubber out underneath. And it doesn't take a long time for that all to, to transpire. Taylor clears. He runs underneath. He's the, he's lower on the, on the, on the rubber out. We've got to run over the top of the linebacker. Great design. Again, these are great designs. And what we're finding out is Jordan Love throws these kind of short underneath routes pretty well, at least in the center of the field, which I think is what everybody always thought, as opposed to outside the hash marks. Outside the numbers, excuse me. Now, my best guess on this fourth and one, my best guess is that Jordan Love's going the wrong way. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. There's no way 87's on the lead side here. Now, they're running a wedge, okay? They're running a wedge. But the way that you block this, right here, is you see Rashid Walker. Rashid's trying to blunt a hole. And you see Eldon Jenkins trying to blunt a hole. And you see 87 is trying to get a high cutoff. And you look at the backside, 89, and you think of Zach Tom, they're taking the cutoff angle. So my best guess is that Jordan Love's wrong here. And he looks a little bit confused when he turns around, obviously. But my best guess is that he's wrong. Doesn't matter. Not really well blocked. You never – listen, here's a very easy thing. You never want to run a wedge with the back off the ball. Like if it's a sneak, you run the wedge – but if you run the wedge and the backs off the ball, even with those three steps to the line of scrimmage, it's just there's too much there's too much space. 
Too much space for something bad to happen. You go across the ball. You see how it frees up up top here. Running across, they they all relax in their zone principles. It loosens up, and so now you've got AJ out of the backfield, and they've just he's got space against what we talked about last week. You know he's got five ten yards before contact. Anzalone thinks he's gonna because he's he's in the air. Anzalone is a tough guy. And he thinks he's gonna level him right here, but that's how this is how the game went for the Lions. He just keeps going like it's nothing. He gets another twelve yards. Anzalone's, I mean, that'll never happen to him again. Under center, play action, got the in cut, and this is a great job by Dobbs. Why? So we do a good job of getting across the safety's face, but he's still going to drive on the in cut. So Dobbs actually gets a little bit higher. I missed this by about half a second, but he gets up to the arrow on the 30 here, and now he comes back for this ball. And is he's saving his himself from a potential blow up if he keeps fading that towards the 25 yard line? That safety comes over and knocks his block off. Great route. Good job here. I think that's on Barnes. Great job of hooking, getting your hips into it. We get just enough of Kaminsky there. On the double team here with 85 and 50 here. Make the safety, make the play. Obviously, Heath, you want to get a little more of that corner, but a great job by the by uh by both tight ends and Zach Tom. Great job here. I'll point out John Running Jr. first. Great job by John Running Jr. here on the outside, just getting one, two pop, getting that guy out of the way. Cause this is okay, this is kind of the the, the downhill. This is, you know, the, the first read is your is your guard here. But backside, where it really matters, I don't know what's happened here with my, here we go. Backside where this really matters, Elgin and, and Rashid uh, Walker do such a good job here. Stop, and the El when you are able to get your hips up above uh, Aleem McNeil, who, who got hurt yesterday for a minute, and we're glad he's okay, but... A, wouldn't have been worse if it, it, it's not the worst thing he'd be out. He's a great player. Um, Anzalone covers fast, but you're able to get your hips over the top of McNeil and Rashid Walker can still drive. And now you get both these guys out of the picture, creating that backside separation so AJ can go downhill. This is the best run of the day for him. Great job running through tackle, run through contact. Same, I think next play. Just don't get split. So we got Yash comes in. And they just get split out. And these are the things like you start talking about details, like how do we how do we get better? How do we get better? So Jenkins can gut drop a little more, drop your chest a little more to the ground, so have a better hip hinge going into contact. But he does a good job of trying to cover the guy up. The problem is, depending on how they teach it, they either he's either not giving Yash enough room to hit anyone, or Yash is is kind of trying to piggyback through him on a play side play and they end up split because they have to get over the top for the linebacker and it has to happen quick. So you see, he's just sitting in there. See Watson leading on the guy again. I love it. Watson's going, man, I did not sign up for this. Yeah. Trips, right? Listen, this is to me, this is more Brett than Aaron. Okay. You start talking about this decision to throw this ball, a little more Brett, a little more far than, than a uh, uh, Rogers. Right across the field, not necessarily wide open. And then you go, man, that was a pretty good throw. You know, they start talking about that when they'll be on the highlight tapes all, all week. But you go, please don't do that again. Still holding tryouts here for lead blocker, Watson. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen, we won this game so we can have a little fun with it. But good Lord, I don't think he needs to be doing that anymore. And on this play, they go motion outside to drag man coverage over they stay press, and Watson wins early with the safety in the middle. So the great part about this is they get the leverage they want from the corner. He wins on the line of scrimmage, and now look at all the space that, that Jordan Love has to throw on. Phenomenal throw and catch. Listen, last two weeks, Watson makes big plays, touchdowns. You know, everyone's on him. I think and there's something that goes on in Twitter. I'm not sure, but, you know, his, his dad or some of your brother, something. Somebody's on defending him, this and that, and the other. I don't know what the hell that it's all about, but I'll tell you what. 
it's fun to watch them catch touchdowns. I know that much. So what I got wrong. Matchup wise, we're talking about Packers interior offensive line against their slant looks. Um, listen, we didn't run the ball great. It was, you know, at 3.2, 3.3 yards of carry for the running backs. But uh, Jaden Reed got involved and he bumped that up. Then obviously Jordan Love with the scrambles. We did a good job at pass pro. They didn't really have, they, listen, they played a physical brand of football up front like they always do. I, I really think a lot of Lee McNeil, third round pick from a couple of years ago. I think he's really good at Hutchinson. It's the, it's the style of the game. So they can load the box more because we're up. Like there's a bunch of stuff that happens, right? So I'm not going to say that we did a, a, a great job or a poor job necessarily on this. I'm just going to say that, that uh, the way the game is played, like, like we're not built. We don't have Kevin Barry playing tight end. We don't have a Bubba Franks. We don't have a Will Henderson. Right. So right now you don't have Aaron Jones. So, and that's not a really great offensive line for run blocking. So you're not really built to be like playing with a lead is great, but playing with a lead with like coach LaFleur, he's probably thinking like, I probably have to throw, I got to throw the ball still. Like I, I'm not able to run and get first downs. So they had a couple, you know, good plays. I thought the tight ends um, are continuing to improve in the running game. They're not great, but some of the stuff that you're doing, like, leading Watson and Jaden Reed. Like those are three runs that we saw that averaged probably negative yardage. And you're going like, maybe we don't need to run those because that's three yard. If, if you want to average four yards a carry and you got three yards that average minus two, like you got to, that's a huge flip flop considering you're only running the ball 20 times with running backs. So it's just those things. Like I, I want to, you want to see that you're going to make the most out of each opportunity by, you know, I thought the the team did a really good job in the passing game of putting people in positions to make plays, obviously with the reverses with Reed, that rock and roll idea, really, really smart in the running game. Still, you're like, ah, dude, that neither of those guys is, um, is Lazard. So you can't lead with them even on a safety. It's just, they're not the they, mentality wise. It's, it's not there. Not yet. Number two, Ryan's uh, Lions run game against the Packers run D. So, our defense, like their run game did pretty well, but it was mostly explosive plays and they're down by, you know, 17 points, down by 20, whatever. The, whatever. I mean, it's a huge disparity in the score until late. And so, the, again, the game changes. What I would say is this, and I think I, I think we showed enough to, to, to all agree that our defense dominated, absolutely warhammered their offensive line and, and, and running game, pass game, whatever you, they just absolutely got dominated. Now they could have, they had some big plays. They fell forward for five yards, four yards, a couple of times. But as far as like who came out and needed a band aid, they did like our team did not need a lot of band aids after this game. Cause they were going full steam ahead. And the third one, the Porta versus, uh, versus who exactly? Well, the Porta started off the game, the first drive, he's got the touchdown. He's got the big play. Um, and he's got, you know, eight targets, five receptions, 47 yards, touchdown, and then the 31 yard uh, long play. We did a. The game kind of went like everything kind of went out the window because we pressured them like 20 plays. I think they had three sacks. I think they had. So it said 12 knockdowns. But I want to say if you just look at like how many times did dude run for his life, it was like 20 snaps that he was running for his life. And. It just changes the way you can play football. I mean, there's just no – they missed – Laporta, they missed him at least twice in the in the first half where he was wide open across the middle, not wide open, wide open for NFL. And he's just not throwing the ball well. Preston Smith's in his face. All, you know, he's running – you know, Kenny Smith's about to take him down. So those things are as much a function of what the defensive line did to their offensive line in the, in the pass rush as anything else and not having a mobile quarterback and et cetera. But Laporta, he's a real deal, man. I mean, he gets you saw he can just get open. Keys to victory. Turnovers. Pressure equals picks. Couldn't be more true. Love's got three touchdowns. Goff's got three picks or three turnovers, excuse me. Couldn't be more true. Sean Gary's got three sacks. Sack, we got we, anything. We got all you can eat uh, yesterday. It was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Limit the explosive plays. They were gashing deep. We made them work for mo for the most part. They had a couple. They had a couple of nice runs. They had a couple of big throws. 
but they did really have to earn their yards and they had to earn their yards in the, in the passing game. And I said, I wrote down for the running backs, but really as much as in the passing game, because of all the things we're talking about, that defensive line, I you know, like you can't say enough about how good their defensive line played. And then the last one with Aaron Jones out, go simple, right? Follow that bears game plan. Literally first play of the game, they follow the bears game plan. But when you talk about what are you trying to accomplish? Understand our play action check. Running game is there, like it's our ability to get their check, but converting on on third downs, like we're doing, you're just doing the things that you have to do. And you have 377 yards on offense. I mean, the, 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 listen, the Detroit Lions had 464 yards of, of offense. Okay. It's not like they didn't move the ball. It's not like they didn't expose our secondary in some places that it's, you know, has injuries and this and that. But what it does mean is, man, they had to fight. They had to go the distance. And again, we talked about it last week with the Pittsburgh Steelers defense and how our, our the Packers defense is starting to kind of maybe feel like that, where we're going to give you some yards, but you're not going to get the points that you expect. The Detroit Lions thought they were going to drop 35 like yesterday. No question. And they could have. But turnovers, fourth down, not converting, not converting on third, those pressures, having a non-mobile quarterback with, it, with that kind of pass rush. Like it all played its part, and while you're you're coming back, you always rack up yards. When it when it came down to it, and you had to convert, couldn't get the job done. So that's it, and that that's that's one of those games where I'll say it again. That was the first time I watched as a whole team. You watch the game, and you go, "That might be a playoff team." They, I mean, they look like. You get Aaron Jones, but you, you start going like, okay, maybe get some guys healthy. We got some people continuing to improve their play. We cut some of the fat off, some of the stuff we're trying to do, maybe in the running game, the wide receiver leads, for example. Uh, it looks like Coach LaFleur and that offensive staff are figuring out exactly what Jordan Love wants to do and figuring out exactly we're not going to try to make Watson what he's not. We're going to embrace what he is. We're going to let Jaden Reed do all the, the fun stuff, you know, the human joystick, Dante Hall stuff you guys call Debo Samuels or whatever, you know, whatever that's, we've got that, that spot filled. we got Romeo Dobbs filling that, that necessary route running, get open across the middle void. We got two young guys, a Heath and Wicks that, that shows that have showed up the last couple of weeks. So you've, you've, you've got the, and you got an offensive line, quite frankly, that can pass block pretty damn well. And if, and if Jordan Lowe's pocket and presence is going to continue to improve, it looks good. It all comes down to, can you get consistently the level of physical violence that you got from that defensive line? Because that just that completely changed this game. Just changed the. I can promise you, I've been on the sidelines. That changed the way they felt about themselves. Talk about the Detroit Lions, the way they were getting their 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 you know backs beaten up. So, guys, enjoy the weekend. I don't know if people are watching games or not, but uh, you can always. Check out the other podcasts here on the Process to Perform channel on YouTube. Check me out, Mike Wall 68 on Twitter, Process to Perform and Instagram. Guys, this is on my blog. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a happy Thanksgiving and have a great weekend again. Talk to you soon.